can we understand how well a company is doing based on their earnings call? Would it be possible to understand if they're optimistic or pessimistic about their future? Well, in this video, that's exactly what we're going to do using Assembly AI sentiment analysis feature. This is what the app will look like. We will have a title and some descriptions for the user. They will be able to give us a YouTube link to the recording of this earnings call. We will show the title of this earnings call to understand what company, which quarter, and what year it belongs to. We will show the transcription on the sidebar. And as an addition, we will have visualizations of this uh, earnings call sentiment analysis. We will have a bar chart showing how many negative, positive, or neutral sentences there are. We will calculate a sentiment score, but I'll show you how to calculate that later. And we will also see on each sentence what sentiment group they belong to. All right, let's jump right into it. All right, so let's get started. I will not start from all the way from scratch this time because we've already done a video where I show you how to transcribe YouTube videos. And that's also where I'm going to start here because we've already done that code. If you're not familiar with it, go ahead and watch that video and then come back here and then we'll uh, go further from where we were. Because in that video, we only gave a link to a YouTube link, uh, YouTube video, and then we transcribed it and then we displayed it on a uh, Streamlit application. But today we're going to go further. We're also going to do sentiment analysis on it. And then we're going to create some visualizations to show this sentiment analysis. So this is what we have so far. Uh, the only difference from the other application is that this time I put the transcription on the sidebar instead of showing it in the actual body. Let's look at our code. So I'll just quickly walk you through what I have so far. Um, I am basically defining the uh, transcription and upload endpoints for assembly AI. And I'm also creating the headers uh, for authentication later. Again, for the authentication, we just need a configure.py file where we have the assembly AI API key that we have. I'll quickly show you how to get that also. It's very simple. All you have to do is either follow the link in the description or go to assemblyai.com and then you just say start now for free. And once you said that, you can sign in. And in the page that welcomes you, you have an API key and you can just click this one and copy it in the configure.py file. And then that's all you need. All right, uh, what I have is a title where I give a title for my app and a caption just describing what this app does and just a subheader uh, to show that this is the place where users need to uh, put a link or input a link. Um, I am getting the input from the user. This is a default value. And then I am, as we did in the previous video, we uh, save this file, this, the audio version of this video that is on YouTube uh, on our local system. And then we read it from our local system and then we upload it to assembly AI like we did last time. And then we start the transcription job using this audio file that we just uploaded to assembly AI by passing it the audio URL that we have. Uh, and this difference this time is that we are saying sentiment analysis. We are passing sentiment analysis as true. And that means we also want together with the transcript, we also want the sentiment analysis results on this transcription. Uh, and that's going to come uh, sentence by sentence, but we will see how the transcription uh, response will look like in a second. Um, and that's all basically, we uh, send the post request to assembly AI to create this transcription job. And then we are getting as a result, a polling endpoint to which we can ask uh, to see if the transcription has been done already or not. Uh, and then we are checking it while it's still being processed. We need to check it once in a while to see if the transcription is complete or not. Uh, and once we have that, once we know the status is complete, then we stop asking and that's it. And then we have the transcript in the polling responses, uh, text, um, section, let's say, but let's look at how this polling response looks like and how we can extract the sentiment analysis from it. And for that, on top of showing the transcript on the application, I'm going to print it, uh, the JSON version of it, as you can see here, uh, in like a pretty printed way on my terminal. So let's run this and see what the response looks like. All right, so now we got the uh, response from Assembly AI. Um, here at the end, all the way at the end, we have the uh, words that were detected. 
So I, I need to actually, I don't have to scroll, I can just look for sentiment analysis results. Yes. So um, in this JSON response that we get from Assembly AI, we have something called sentiment analysis results. And that's where we have the sentiment analysis for each sentence. So each sentence is basically one dictionary, um, kind of or, or one little JSON um, segment. And in each of them, we have the confidence. So what is the confidence that we are uh, detecting or classifying the sentence as positive? Um, and then the start of the sentence, the end of the sentence, and the sentiment that was the cl it classified as, uh, if there is a speaker, the speaker specified that we will also see it here. And we also see the specific text that was uh, classified as positive or with the specific sentiment. We get positive, negative, or neutral with Assembly AI's sentiment analysis. And as I said, we get a confidence and we get it for every single sentence. I think this is quite clear how we can read this. Uh, I'm just going to save this to a, a different variable. And all we have to do is instead of getting the text, we are going to get the, as I just saw, sentiment analysis result. The results, yes. And uh, it is quite hard to work with when we have a JSON uh, file like this, a JSON variable or a dictionary. So I'm going to turn this actually into a uh, Python or P Pandas data frame so that it will be easier to work with, change, um, you know, or create insights with, or even visualize. I will call this a sentiment data frame. And it's very simple. If we already imported Pandas, we just need to say data frame sentiment analysis results. And then I'm also going to print the first five uh, rows of this data frame, just to see if everything looks correct. Okay, and this looks quite good, actually. Uh, we have the text in one column, all the texts, the sentences in one column, the start and end points of the sentences, whether it's positive, negative, or neutral, and the confidence in uh, separate columns. So uh, this is quite nice. Uh, what I want to do next is to actually use this information and start visualizing it. All right, the first thing is I want to show the title of this video because when people uh, paste a new link, maybe they'll forget what uh, earnings call they were actually aiming to see uh, the analysis of, the sentiment analysis of. So I want to extract the title from this URL that we're getting and then show it to the user. And we can actually do this uh, by using beautiful soup. Uh, what we do is we just get the HTML code, HTML code uh, from this URL. And then in this HTML code, we are reading the title uh, of this HTML uh, file. And the title is the YouTube name of this video. So uh, let's see that quickly. Nice. So we have the name of this earnings call. So we know it's for the company Amazon as for Q3 of 2021. So that's perfect. And the next thing that I want to do is to see how many sentences there are in this earnings call and then also show it to the user. So it would be quite simple. I'll just show it stream with markdown. So once I save this, then I can also go and check out how it looks. All right, nice. So apparently we had 388 sentences in Amazon's Q3 earnings call of 2021. Uh, this is good to know. So the next thing that I want to do is to create actual visualizations. And the first visualization that I want to create is a bar chart showing me how many positive, negative, and neutral sentences there are in this earnings call. Uh, so for that, the first thing that I want to do is to actually group um, the sentiment, different sentiment uh, values and see how many sentences there are in our data frame. Uh, so it is quite simple with pandas because I'm going to use the value count function. What I do is in the sentiment column, I just say count the different values, how many times they uh, occur in this data set. And I'll, I'll show you what this looks like. Right, so this small data frame looks quite simple. It just in one column shows me uh, the value for the sentiment and in the second column shows me how many of them there are in this the data frame, the bigger data frame that we had. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is to create a plotly graph and uh, show this in a bar chart. Uh, but before that, I actually want to 
have two columns to show my visualizations. In the first column, I'll have a bar chart. In the second column, I will have a score as I showed you in the beginning of the video too. So for that, very simply, I just need to say stream of columns, create two columns. The first one I'll call column one, the second one I'll call column two. To create a bar chart, just need to say Plotly Express. Uh, this is the library that I'm using for this specific one. Uh, create a bar chart with the grouped data frame. In the x-axis is going to be the sentiment, so positive, negative, or neutral. Y-axis is going to have the count. The width of it is going to be 500, uh, but I will actually also specify this in my update layout. I'll show you in a second, so I can remove that one. The color is going to depend on the sentiment, and uh, here is the color map that we're going to use. Uh, for the negative one, I have a red called fire brick. For the neutral one, I have a neutral color called Navaja white. And for positive, I have dark green. I'm using kind of fancier ones because I don't like the normal red, blue or green. They are kind of ugly. So we also want something that kind of, uh, you know, looks nice, right? All right, the second thing that I want to do is something that I always copy and paste when I'm working with Plotly just so that I have some control over how my graph looks. Um, so I am, I'm using the applied layout function they have. I want the legend to be false. I don't want there to be any legend because most of the time it just is redundant information that you can already see inside the graph. So that's why I'm not showing it. You can specify the width and the height and also the margin or the padding if you like to. So let's save this. And um, lastly, because I want to show this on the app, I will say column one, plotly chart, and show figure. And that's it. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like. Awesome. Okay, this is exactly what I wanted. I will close the sidebar for now because, you know, it's just taking up space. If you want, you can pull it back up and then close it. Uh, all right, so it looks like we had two, 213 neutral sentences, which is good. I guess they're quite neutral. And most other sentences are positive, 157, and negative sentences are 18. So I guess this was overall a more positive than negative <laughs> uh, call. Uh, so the next thing that I want to do is actually to kind of give like one number or one score to this call overall. And I will call it the sentiment score. Uh, so I'll show you how I calculate that now. So for that one, what I decided would uh, work well uh, to see if a call was overall positive or negative is to s give it a score from zero to a hundred. If it's zero, it was completely negative. It was terrible. It was a terrible call. If it's 50, it was a neutral call, you know, nothing really special. If it's higher than 50, uh, then it means that it was a positive call. So a hundred would be perfectly positive. So what I did for that is to calculate the percentages of all the sentences that are positive compared to all the other sentences that are in this call. Uh, so really quickly, what I do is just say, uh, give me the count of all the sentences that were positive and uh, calculate the percentage of that based on all the sentences that I have in this call and do it for negative and neutral too. And what I do is I uh, add up the number of neutral sentences with number of, or the percentage of neutral sentences with the percentage of positive sentences and subtract the percentage of negative sentences. This one will be a little bit different to show because I'm going to use the graph objects uh, plotly library this time instead of the express library because this is the only way I could find to show kind of like a gauge uh, of, you know, if it's like positive or negative, it will show different colors. Uh, so for that, I'll create a plotly graph again. And uh, inside this graph, I will add something, I guess these are called the uh, indicators. So we're adding a trace uh, of an indicator from the graph objects library. Uh, this one is called Delta. The specific one is called Delta. They have a couple different options. You can go check them out. Uh, I am going to show the sentiment uh, score also. My update layout function is a bit more full this time. Again, I have the width, height and margin and everything. But on top of that, I'm also specifying uh, what the title text needs to be. What is the reference value that I'm taking? So uh, everything will be shown as a reference to 50 because as I said, 50 is like the neutral. If everything was neutral is 50. And uh, if it's higher than that is positive, if it's lower than that is negative. And that's what I want to show. And uh, yeah, that's it. So now we can just display this in column two.
Nice. So apparently the score we had for this one is 90.7 because we got a 40.7 positive score. If we had, if the sentiment score we got was, let's say, 20, that means that the score is actually quite negative. So we would have gotten a red looking number that was with the arrow pointing down uh, that would have said 30. So, all right, um, these are quite nice. And the last thing that I want to show you is uh, where in the sentence the negativity happens, uh, where in this whole call, not in a sentence, but where in this whole call the negativity happens. So for that, I'm just going to use a very simple scatter plot that shows me uh, where the positive sentences are, where the neutral sentences are, and where the negative sentences are. Luckily for this one, I don't have to create any special data set. I can directly use the sentiment analysis response that I got from Assembly AI, so that JSON or dictionary, whatever you want to call it, uh, variable that I have. Uh, I just need to specify that Y is going to be the sentiment. So I want them kind of layered on top of each other. Um, and the X axis is just going to be the index. So I don't have to specify it. Again, I want the sentiment to dictate the color of this. Uh, and I also want the size to show me how confident um, Assembly AI's API is based on, uh, you know, what sentiment this uh, sentence belongs to. Um, when I hover it, I want to be able to see the text, so the sentence that, that is in question. Uh, and the color map is again negative, is going to be fire break, neutral, Navajo white, and positive dark green. Uh, I again will have my update layout function here. Uh, this time I'm going to make it a bit more narrow and longer. So, you know, we will have a bit more of space. So it, it will span the whole uh, width of the app that we have instead of just being in one column. So we'll be able to see it a bit more clearly. Uh, and that's it actually. So let me show that on the app screen and we can go and uh, read some options or sentences and how they are, we'll see how they're classified. All right, and here it is. As you can see, we have uh, on the top side, we have the positive uh, sentences and the neutral and negative ones. And we see that the negative ones are kind of grouped together here. And then here again, like in the beginning, a little bit before the middle, right after the middle, and just uh, two sentences towards the end. Uh, and whereas the whole call was more or less positive and generally a lot of neutral remarks too. Uh, so, you know, let's look at some positive ones. Thank you for standing by. Uh, some of them are a little bit too long to read. Uh, you know, better price performance than current x86 processors is positive. Uh, great, someone says. <laughs> That's positive, of course. Uh, we're getting closer. Yeah, definitely I do. So these are things that were uh, specified as positive. Uh, what about the negative ones? Let's look at a couple. This one says, our capacity constraints actually labor, uh, which is new and not welcome. That definitely sounds like something negative is going on there. We're dealing with labor risks and supply chain interruptions. That also sounds quite uh, negative to me. It was a larger loss than in prior quarters. So it looks like the sentiment analysis actually uh, go works quite well here because we see that all of these sentences are actually things that have a negative uh, feeling to them. So so can't for forecast this any further at the segment level. So it's uh, quite good. Um, and, you know, this was Amazon's uh, Q3 2021 earnings call. If you find, uh, well, I mean, it, it's very easy to find other earnings calls on YouTube. Uh, for example, I tried Netflix or Facebook. Uh, you can also try them out here uh, and see, you know, what their sentiment analysis is, what their score is, and how the sentences kind of are distributed towards the whole call. Um, the code you can find in the GitHub repository as always, and you can just download it, plus in your own assembly AI API, which you can get uh, through the link in the description. Try different earnings calls and uh, see how their sentiment is. And maybe you can even come up with some visualizations yourself and, you know, add some new value to this application. If you come up with something like that, definitely let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to make this app yourself, you will need two things, the code, and the Assembly AI API token. And the link for both will be in the description below. If you liked it, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to be one of the first people to know when we publish a new video. And also, if you have any questions or comments, or if you want to let us know what kind of videos you wanna see next, leave a comment and let us know. Well, for now, have a nice day.